contemporary Indian paintings. In 1867, E.B. Havel was appointed the principal of the Art College at Calcutta. He, as we discussed above, gave greater importance to the art traditions of this country instead of those of Europe. However, he himself was not able to produce some outstanding works. This task was taken up by Abhinandanath Tagore and the result was the Bengal School of Art. This school proclaimed Raja Ravi Verma, who was a leading practitioner of the academic style, to be in bad taste. Whatever its shortcomings, the Bengal school restored to health the indigenous tradition in painting and infused self-confidence among the Indian artists. This school was followed by the Santiniketan school, led by Rabindranath Tagore's harking back to idyllic rural folk and rural life. By the time of independence in 1947, several schools of art in India provided access to modern techniques and ideas. Galleries were established to showcase these artists. This was the dawn of modern Indian paintings. The Calcutta Group, the Calcutta Group, was the first group of modern artists in India, formed in 1943 in Kolkata. Its leading members included the sculptor Pradosh Das Gupta and the painters Subho Tagore, Paritosh Sen, Gopal Ghose, Nirode Mazumdar and General Abedin. The group held exhibitions from 1945 and held a joint exhibition in 1950 with the Progressive Artists Group in Bombay. This group of artists expressed the need for a visual language that could reflect the crisis of urban society. For the first time in modern Indian art, artists began to paint images that evoked anguish and trauma and reflected the urban situation. Rural scenes were no longer purely idyllic, and the formal treatment of the paintings began to reflect the influence of European modernism. Progressive Artists Group, Bombay, Progressive Artists Group, Bombay was established Francis Newton Souza first post-independence Indian artist to achieve high recognition in the West. Its early members were S. H. Raza, M. F. Hussain and Manishi De. Objective of the Progressive Artists Group The objective of the Progressive Artists Group was to break away with the revivalist nationalism established by the Bengal School of Art and to encourage an Indian avant-garde engaged at an international level. The group was highly influenced by the Indian inner version or the Antargyan and the same was now being portrayed in their art rather than the European realism. Other prominent painters of the group included S. K. Bakre, Akbar Padamsi, Ram Kumar and Taib Mehta. They wanted to paint with absolute freedom for content and technique. This group was basically an omnium gatherum of different styles and influences. The most important influence on the group was of European modernism. The group later lost into oblivion in late 1950s. Young Turks, beside the Calcutta group, there was another group called the Young Turks, 
among whom P. T. Reddy was a prominent member. The Young Turks encouraged by Charles Gerard, principal of Sir J. J. School of Art held their first exhibition in 1941. Then there were Bhabesh Sanyal and Silos Mukherjee, who left Calcutta. The first went to Lahore, and the second came to Delhi in search of employment. These artists find prominent place in the National Gallery of Modern Arts collection. Francis Newton Souza, Francis Newton Souza, 1924 to 2002, was a famous Indian painter, born in Goa. He was the first Indian artist to receive recognition. In the West, he attended Sir J.J. School of Art, but due to his involvement in the Quit India movement, he was suspended in the year 1945. Contribution in Indian Art Souza was the founder of the Bombay Progressive Artists Group. In 1949, he went to London and started getting recognized there for his works at Gallery 1, North London. In 1954, his work was included in an exhibition organized by the Institute of Contemporary Arts. His autobiographical work Nirvana of a Maggot was published in Encounter, a journal then edited by Stephen Spender. In 1959, another book by him called Words and Lines got published, which was highly acknowledged. Souza's initial work created an impact both in India and abroad as a strong mode mist. His strong, bold lines delineated the head in a distinctive way where it virtually reinvented the circles hatchings and crosses. His forms retained their plasticity in later years but became less incentive. In later years, his forms retained their plasticity but became less incentive. As per John Berger, Souza's style was deliberately eclectic and essentially expressionist. But at the same time his work was often considered highly erotic, as he depicted post-war, art brute movement and elements of British neoromanticism. He went to New York in 1967 and settled there. He later returned to India shortly before his death. He was honored with the Kala Samman in the year 2000 by the Madhya Pradesh government. He died in 2002. In 2008, his painting Barth, 1955, set a world auction record for the most expensive Indian painting. Sold till then by selling for rupees 1.3 crore. S. H. Raza, Syed Hader Raza, born 1922, is the 2013 Padma Vibhushan awardee. He was born in Babriya, Mandala, Madhya Pradesh, studied at the Nagpur School of Art, and later went to Sir J. J. School of Art, Bombay. In 1946, his first solo show was held at Bombay Art Society Salon for which he also was awarded the Silver Medal. He then went to France in October 1950 on a Government of France scholarship. He studied at the École Nationale Supérieure des Beaux-Arts, ENSBA, in Paris from 1950 to 1953. 
He traveled across Europe after his studies and lived and exhibited his work in Paris. In 1956, he became the first non-French artist to be awarded the Prix de la Critique. Painting style, the Rajbindu for Raza, Bindu is a point where he concentrates his energy, his mind, and has become his Bhagavad Gita, Swadhan, etc. For him, the Bindu has been a vast subject with its variations throughout his life. Raza's works make prize history. Bindu shows the emergence of symbolic and ritual elements in traditional art as pure abstractions. Abstraction is the dominant element in Raza's Bindu series at the turn of the 1980s. Hailed as one of the country's most expensive artists, he set a milestone last year when his work, Saurashtra, sold for 16 rupees and 42 paise crore in an auction at Christie's. He uses very rich colors, replete with icons from Indian cosmology as well as its philosophy. His works are mainly abstracts in oil or acrylic. Raza's style has evolved over the years. His paintings eventually became more abstract in nature. From his fluent watercolors of landscapes and townscapes, he moved towards a more expressive language painting landscapes of the mind. Awards In the year 1981, he was awarded the Padma Shri and Fellowship of the Lalit Kala Academy. In 2010, he became India's preciest modern artist seminal work, Saurashtra which was sold for 16.42 crore INR. He was honored with the Padma Bhushan in 2007 and in 2013, he was awarded Padma Vibhushan by the Government of India. Makbul Fida Hussain Makbul Fida Hussain 1915 to 2011 India's most charismatic and most internationally recognized painter was Romans personified in both work and life Hussain's crime was that he had painted Hindu gods and goddesses in the nude sometime in the 1970s. Though there are many examples of Hindu deities depicted in the nude in exquisite ancient temple sculptures, the Hindu right wing hounded him out of India. He was born on 17 September 1915 in a poor household in Pandharpur, Maharashtra. His father was a timekeeper in a small mill and had the additional responsibility of bringing up his motherless son. Hussein had lost his mother when he was an infant. He remained a devotee of women and womanhood for the rest of his life. As a co-founder of Progressive Art Group, Hussain went to study at V.D. Devlalikar's art school in Indore. While in his teens, the family's finances were strained, but it somehow managed to send him to the school of Devlalikar because he was a respected artist and teacher who painted in the Indian style. It's worth note that other famous artists such as S.H. Raza, H.A. Gade and Ingol had also studied under Dev Lalikar. The paucity of resources led Hussain to move to Bombay where he became a painter of huge film banners. 
He also studied for a while at the Sir J. J. School of Art. Later, he came into contact with the Austrian Expressionist Lang Hyman and the art critic Rudi von Ledon, both refugees from Hitler's Nazi Germany. These two men played a seminal role in introducing 20th century Western art in Bombay. Hussein became a co founder, along with Francis Newton Souza, of the Progressive Artists Group in 1948. In 1952, his first solo exhibition was held at Zurich. He was awarded Padma Shri by the Government of India in 1955. In 1967, he made his first film, Through the Eyes of a Painter. In 1971, he was a special invitee along with Pablo Picasso at the Sao Paulo Biennial, Brazil. In 1973, he was awarded Padma Bhushan. He was nominated as a Rajya Sabha member in 1986. Later, in 1991, he was awarded Padma Vibhushan by the Indian government. Contribution to Indian art, his narrative paintings, executed in a modified cubist style, can be caustic and funny as well as serious and somber. His themes which were usually treated in series included diverse topics such as Mohandas K. Gandhi, Mother Teresa, the Ramayana, the Mahabharata, the British Raj, and motifs of Indian urban and rural life. He has also produced and directed several movies, including Gaja Gamini and Meenakshi, A Tale of Three Cities. Hussein was charged with hurting sentiments of people because of his nude portraits of Hindu gods and goddesses in 2006. Since then he lived in self-imposed exile from until his death. At Christie's auction in 2008, Hussein became the best-paid painter in India, with his highest-selling piece fetching $1.6 million. He was conferred Qatari nationality in 2010. For the last years of his life, Hussein lived in Dubai and London. M. F. Hussain died in 2011. Taib Mehta, Taib Mehta, 1925-2009, was one of the pioneers of modern Indian art. He was born in 1925 in Kabdavant, a town of Kida district, Gujarat. During his early days, he worked as a film editor in a cinema laboratory at famous studio, Mumbai. In 1952, he joined Sir J.J. School of Art where he received a diploma and became a part Bombay Progressive Artists Group, due to which he was strongly influenced and inspired by Western modernism. In 1959, he went to London and worked there for nearly five years. During this period, he was highly influenced by the Expressionist works of Francis Bacon. He was later awarded the Rockefeller Fellowship in 1968 for which he went to New York. While in New York his work came to be characterized by minimalism. He also won a gold medal for painting first triennial in New Delhi in 1968. In 1969, he accidentally discovered the diagonal series 
which later became one of the main characteristic features of all his work through the 1970s. Later, his work also included falling figures and mythological figures highlighted by the depictions of goddess Kali and demon Mahishasura. He won the Filmfare Critics Award in the year 1970 for three-minute short film name Kudil. The film was based on Bandra Slaughter House. In 1974, the, he won the Prix National at the International Festival of Painting in Cagnes-sur-Mer, France. During 1984-85, he was also an artist in residence at Shantiniketan. This led to a significant transformation in his work. He received the Kalidas Samman in the year 1988. In 2002, his creation named Celebration for 15 million INR, which made him the highest paid Indian painter of that time. In 2005, his painting gesture was sold for 31 million Indian rupees to Ranjit Malkan. It was the then highest price paid to an Indian painter by an Indian. His work has been exhibited in the various international art museums including Museum of Modern Art, Oxford, England, and the Yershon Museum. He was awarded with the Padma Bhushan by the Government of India in the year 2007. He died in the year 2009 at the age of 83. Art of Taib Mehta Taib had grown up in the Crawford market of Mumbai within the Orthodox Sheet community of the Daudi Boras. He had witnessed the violence and experienced the frazzled remains of the Indian society. During his childhood, he used to live at Muhammad Ali Road. It was a time of India's partition. One day he saw a man getting slaughtered on the streets just below his house. The man was hammered by the mob and his head smashed because he happened to be a Muslim. This incident made Taibal for several days and then the memory haunted him throughout his life. The violence that he saw during his childhood gave way to the emotions which reflects in his paintings. In 1947, he got enrolled at Sir J.J. School of Art in Mumbai. There he met the graduates of this school including M.F. Hussain and F.N. Souza, who comprised the progressives and rejected both Western classicism and the nationalist Bengal school in favor of a new Indian Avant Garde. Following a self-imposed separation from his extended family at age 29, Mehta went abroad to London and Paris for four months in 1954 to study Western art, both the old masters and European modernists. In 1956, he completed his first important works. Rickshaw Pullers and Trust Bull, abstract canvases composed of hard-edged shapes that prefigured, in both subject and style, his best-known works. Diagonal series, the diagonal series of paintings creates an effect a partition of space that was homogeneous until the making of this gesture into two related but separate parts. This series reverberates an echo of the 1947 partition of British India. 
It was a partition of India that put Mehta and other Muslims under the pressure to choose between the homeland or new collective ideal based upon only religion. The Diagonal series also emphasizes separation and twinning and the psychology of schism that haunted this painter while he was alive. Falling series The Falling series also reverberates the traumatic memory from his childhood when he witnessed the violent death of a man during the partition riots of 1947. The Falling Figures series represent an exceptional moment of synergy between Tide's artistic and social concerns. The emotions behind the Falling Figures were to define a resistance and control the tension in the paintings through spaces colors, images and matrices in order to bring out a catastrophe. The Falling series won a lots of accolades for him in India as well as abroad. His famous painting titled The Falling Figure and Bird displays a human figure in a state of deliberation while falling. The painting shows his intellectual rendezvous with modernist existentialism and international concepts of the universal man. Akbar Padamsi Akbar Padamsi is considered one of the pioneers in modern Indian painting. He was born in Mumbai, India. He met his first mentor Shirsat, a watercolorist in St. Xavier's High School, Fort. He initially received training in this medium. Subsequently, he attended classes on nudes in preparation for his studies at the Sir J.J. School of Art. Due to his deep understanding about the intricacies of art, he was directly admitted to the third year in Sir J.J. School of Art. It was then where he came in close contact with pioneers of modern Indian paintings like by Francis Newton Souza, S. H. Raza, and N. F. Hussain, who had formed the Progressive Artists Group in 1947. This close association has a deep influence on his work. He has worked with various mediums from oil painting, plastic emulsion, watercolor, sculpture, printmaking, to computer graphics, and photography, as worked a filmmaker, sculptor, photographer, engraver, and lithographer. In 1951, he went to France where he met the surrealist Stanley Hayter, who became his next mentor. He joined his studio named Atelier 17. In 1952, Padamsi's first exhibition was held in Paris for which he was awarded by the French magazine Journal d'Art along with the painter Jean Carzou. It was only in 1954, when his first solo exhibition was held at the Jahangir Art Gallery. In 1962, he received the Lalit Kala Academy Fellowship. He also received a fellowship by the Rockefeller Foundation in 1965 after which he was subsequently invited to be an artist-in-residence by the University of Wisconsin, Stout. In the year 1997, he was honored with the Kalidas Samman by the government of Madhya Pradesh. He received many distinctions such as the Padma Shri in 2009, and Padma Bhushan subsequently in the year 2010.
He is amongst one of the most valued Indian painters today. Art of Akbar Padamsi The work of Akbar Padamsi is introspective. His metascapes or his mirror images are abstract images formed from the search for a formal logic. His topics include landscapes, female nudes, heads, and he has done portraits created in pencil and charcoal. The depth which emerges from his all-based works emanates from the colored matter. He has also done black and white photographs which use light to create dimension. Padamsi's heads reflect the radiant presence of the prophets and martyrs who fascinated him during the 1960s. The metascapes he did in the early to mid 1990s have won him accolades in India as well as abroad and is considered to be his finest work. The distinct identity of the metascapes is the depiction of sun and moon. The idea of using the sun and moon in the metascapes originated when Akbar was reading the introductory stanza to Abhijnana Shakuntalam. Yal Kalidasa speaks of the eight visible forms of the Lord without mentioning them by name, the sun and the moon as the two controllers of time, water as the origin of all life, fire as the link between man and God, and the earth as the source of all seed. This is the subjection of the denotative sense to a poetic meaning. Through this process, the artist deals with reality without describing it. When poetic meaning is superimposed upon the sign, a new form arises. This belongs to the mind of the artist, not to nature. In order to explore new genres, Padamsi created Svizid Vajavai, events in a cloud chamber films shot in 1970, and explored computers in computographics. His painting Reclining Nude was sold for USD 1, 4 to 6,500 in 2011. Amrita Shergil The Birth Centenary Celebrations of Amrita Shergil was launched in February 2013 at the National Gallery of Modern Art. To celebrate the life and works of Amrita Shergil, the Ministry of Culture, Government of India is organizing a series of events under the auspices of the centenary celebrations. Here are some important points about her life and her work. Known as India's Friday Kahlo, a 2006 auction made her most expensive woman painter of India. Born in Hungary to a Sikh aristocrat, mother was a Jewish opera singer from Hungary. Trained in Europe as a painter, drew inspiration from European painters such as Paul Sisson and Paul Gogwin. Early paintings display a significant influence of the Western modes of painting with special influence of works of Hungarian painters, especially the Nagyabandi school of painting. The first important painting was Young Girls. This painting led to her election as an associate of the Grand Salon in Paris in 1933 making her the youngest ever to have received this recognition. She was greatly impressed and influenced by the Mughal and Pahari schools of painting and the cave paintings at Ajanta. In 1937, she produced famous South Indian trilogy of paintings 
bride stallet brahmacharis and the south indian villagers by this time her style had transformed and her paintings expressed the life of indian people through her canvas while living in saraya gorakhpur she painted the village scene in the ladies enclosure and seesta all of which portray the leisurely rhythms of life in rural india seesta and in the ladies enclosure reflect her experimentation with the miniature school of painting while village scene reflects influences of the pahari school of painting initially her painting found no buyers the government of india has declared her works as national art treasures and most of them are housed in the national gallery of modern art in new delhi amrita was known for her many affairs with both men and women and many of the latter she also painted her work to women is thought to be a painting of herself and her lover marie louise a poster stamp depicting her painting hill women was released in 1978 by india post and the amrita shergil mark is a road in lutians delhi named after her in 2006 Her painting village scene sold for 9 crores at an auction in New Delhi which was at the time the highest amount ever paid for a painting in India. Her work is a key theme in the contemporary Indian novel Faking It by Amrita Chaudhuri. Important paintings Young Girls Camels Hill Women to Women Hungarian market scene tribal women to elephants bride stallet brahmacharis the south indian villagers in the ladies enclosure village scene sista